When you think of inks, you usually think of a black ink that either comes in a pen or can be used with a brush. But inks come in a whole range of colors and consistencies. So what makes them different from paints like watercolor? Hey everyone, it's Madame Perry. Today we're working on days two through five of my Cyberpunktober paintings from this past week. And since I'm using India ink on fully colored and rendered paintings, I wanted to talk about what makes painting with inks different than painting with watercolors. By the way, the blue stuff that you saw me use at the beginning of this video that went on the windows of the building that I'm painting is called masking fluid. If you saw my painting a song video, you know what that is, but if not, it's basically a liquid that once it's dry, it can be painted over and then peeled up to reveal the white of the paper again. It lets me not have to stress about painting around fine details, since it protects them from the paint. Most masking fluid is made with latex, but the children's drawing gum by Pebeo is safe for people like me who have latex allergies. Mine is going a bit weird and clumpy, and I think it's slowly solidifying over time, which is kind of unfortunate. We'll see how much longer this bottle lasts, I guess. Anyway, let's get into the actual topic at hand. Inks come in a wide variety of formats, but for the most part, they fall into two categories, dye-based and pigment-based inks. Dye-based inks are made of a color that's dissolved into a solution, and they're not light-fast, so they should be used in sketchbooks or protected behind UV glass or varnish. Pigment-based inks, like the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay inks that I'm using today, are made to be light fast, so they're safer to use for finished works than dye-based inks. Because inks are dissolved into a watery solution, sometimes the pigments separate, and you have to make sure that you shake your ink bottle up to reintegrate that pigment. Paints, on the other hand, like watercolors, aren't made of dissolved particles, instead they use a binder like gum arabic to carry the pigment particles across the page. The light fastness of a watercolor paint depends on the specific pigment used. When working with watercolors, you always want to dilute the paint with water, even if you're working with watercolors straight out of the tube and you might think that they're already wet. You need them to be at a watery consistency in order for them to spread well. By mixing them with water, you can also create lighter values. You can do the same with ink to dilute the pigment and get lighter values, but you don't have to. You can work with ink straight from the bottle because it already comes in a watery consistency. Inks are intensely pigmented. They're designed to have the most concentrated pigment possible while still being in liquid form. But because they're already a liquid, you can drop that highly saturated pigment directly onto your painting. For better or for worse, honestly, sometimes I make that mistake and I end up with something that's way too saturated. When working with watercolors, I frequently have to layer or activate the paint for a long time to get the paint to be as saturated as I want it to be. While watercolors often come dry in pan format and can be re-wet, inks usually dry permanently. With watercolor, once it dries on the paper, you can still often reactivate the paint that's on the page and lift it back up. While some watercolors are staining, meaning it's hard to lift them from the paper once they've dried, inks almost always stain the paper, and absolutely will not budge once they're dry. This makes them great for layering, especially for line work, since your thin lines won't bleed once you start painting over them. The only exception to this rule that I personally own is my Higgins white ink, which, even though the box says it's waterproof, it definitely lifts when water is applied on top. Because watercolor reactivates sometimes when it's on the paper, I find it easier to create blending or gradients with watercolors than I do with ink. But with inks, once I have a clean line on the paper, I know that line is going to stay crisp and clean, even if I paint over it six other times. I find that even when ink is wet, as soon as it touches the paper, it immediately absorbs in and stains the page. 
so it's very difficult to correct mistakes with ink. With watercolor, you can sometimes scrub the paint back up off of the page and blot it with a dry paper towel, and your mistake will lift off of the page, but with inks, once it's on the page, it's there for good. I find that because of this, it's very hard for me to create smooth washes or gradients with ink. If the ink sits in one spot for just a little bit too long because I wasn't quick enough to blend it out, it leaves an outline or a streak of where it was sitting. You might notice that I've actually been kind of struggling with that a lot in these paintings. I felt like I've had to rush because if I work too slowly, I can't blend the way I want to. But because I'm rushing, things aren't coming out as well as I'd like. So I rush even more so I can get the painting done with. It's a whole mood, really. Both inks and watercolors come in a variety of opacities. But the difference here is that the opacity of a watercolor will usually depend on the pigment used, whereas most India inks you find will be semi-transparent. I found that acrylic inks, which are basically acrylic paint in its most fluid and liquid form physically possible, have a higher tendency of having white pigment added, which makes them more opaque. I'm using some fluorescent acrylic inks here for the neon bits in all of these paintings. One thing that you can do with inks that you can't do with watercolors is apply it with a pen. You can buy pens preloaded with inks, such as the Fude pen or the Micron pens that I'm using in this video. Or you can get a fountain pen or a dip pen. You'll see me use one of these in the next video. Some inks shouldn't be used with a fountain pen though, since they might cause it to clog, so always read the label and make sure that it's safe for fountain pens if you want to use it with one. There are so many ways to draw and work with ink that I haven't tried or touched upon here, like airbrushing or using alcohol inks, which are a dye-based ink in an alcohol solution instead of a water-based one. Liquid watercolors are also a product that exists, but I don't own any and I've never used them, so I can't speak for how they work. If you want to work with ink, but you've been struggling with a technique you aren't happy with, there's probably another technique that you haven't heard of that you might like more. Experiment and don't limit yourself to what someone else might tell you is the right way to work. This is one of the things that I talk about in my Creative Productivity Workbook. You can read the first chapter and get a bonus worksheet right now by following the link in the description. While inks and watercolors have a lot of similarities, the differences between them make working with them very unique experiences. They can even be used together in the same painting, which is something that I haven't tried yet outside of simply using micron pens to line my watercolor artworks, but I'd love to experiment more with this some other time. Maybe I can outline my watercolor works in a bright magenta with a dip pen or something. What's your favorite way of working with ink? Let me know down below. If you haven't seen my previous Cyberpunktober painting, check that out right here. And make sure you're subscribed, because I've got a lot more of this coming your way all month. Until next time, take care!